Hi, I'm Devin Bakewell, novelist and author of Greater Love and Greater Life, and you're watching So Booking Cool. So fucking, so fucking, so fucking cool. That's so much fucking cool. So listen to So Booking Cool. My name is Zoe Dinkwa, and I am writing a book about a young woman who is navigating through college and learning to live life on her own. My book explores an eruption of race, first generation college students, black love, black life, sexual assault and healing from sexual assault, self love, coming of age, and falling in love for the first time. I decided to write this book because I believe that young black voices need to be heard more in literature and just the black experience in general. Welcome to So Booking Cool, it's Jewel B. Today's guest believes a greater love can lead to a greater life. Her novels of the same names have been praised by college students who feel seen in the series, which centers young black students navigating education, romance, friendship, and life overall. She is an activist as well as advocate for women and children. At her alma mater, Howard University, she started a women's group dedicated to sisterhood. She also received the Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award for her commitment to teaching social emotional learning to young children. Our guest is also a journalist whose work you can find with the Black Press of America and the Los Angeles Sentinel. Back with us today, she is Devin Bakewell. Stay tuned for our conversation. Only I'm so looking for you. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, it is lovely to have you, Devin. So I know the last time we spoke, the first time we spoke on the show, you were completing your college degree, right, at HU? Yeah, definitely. And actually, this was like the first podcast or interview I ever did. So I'm really excited to be back and doing another interview. Oh, Devin, that is wonderful. <laughs> first of all, congratulations on graduating and congratulations on now being a two-time author. How does that feel? Oh, thank you. It feels so good. It feels good to just kind of be walking in my path and doing you know, what I've always wanted to do, which is be a novelist and an author and write romance for and about Black people. So it feels really good. Yes, and that's something that you do so well. For anybody who has read Devin's work, she mm -hmm. really is a great writer. It shows that you did study English and you have been writing for years, even mm -hmm. before you became a published author, right? So just kind of let's recap a bit on how writing showed up in your love and when you felt the confidence to share your writing with the world? Yeah, I've been writing since I was in maybe like the third or fourth grade. It was really the first thing that I really loved to do. I always have kind of been an avid storyteller growing up and um, I always just had stories kind of running in my mind and when I got my first laptop young I just kind of started typing and I've loved it ever since and knew that I wanted to make a career out of it and I've always loved to read. And a big thing that I always felt was missing was black female characters like me and black, and I was a big advocate for romance novels, even really young, I loved teen romance and I never saw romance novels about black couples. So that's really what made me wanna start writing romance novels about black people and for black people because when I was growing up, I would read all these romance books and I would just kind of make myself think like I would picture them as black couples and black people. But yeah, it was just something always missing and something that I wanted to fill the gap and do myself. Yeah, I was going to ask too. You went right to it, Devin. <laughs> read those romance novels. Did you then try to imagine if it was you or, you know, another black couple in place? So yeah, I think you know, many of us have been there before. And something else that you hope to do with your books, Devin, is to start conversations. Do you remember mm -hmm. the first book that made you want to have a conversation? The first book that made me want to have a conversation. I can't exactly tell you the name of it. Hmm. 
Okay, well, I, I'll talk about the first book that really I can think about. And I read in college was um, Sister Soldiers: The Coldest Winter Ever, and I mean, I just really thought that it was the first book where it was like a young girl who I was so captivated by. And I mean, I feel like me and Sister Soldiers writing is it's a very different and kind of has a different subject and a different topic. But it was a young girl who I felt so captivated by, and when I talked about it with other people, they she was so recognized and everybody knew her. I mean, it was like, I was talking about it with my mom and she had read the book years ago and my aunts and even teachers. And I felt like that is what the kind of stories that I wanted to write, you know, books that you can talk about it when you're young, you can talk about it with older people and, um, you know, they can like reminisce on their times when they were young and you can have like find commonality through people. Oh, yes, Devin. And you mentioned the classic, The Coldest Winter Ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, with your own books, mm -hmm. what kind of feedback have you noticed? And not even just feedback, but how have you noticed people have been responding to the greater life, the greater love books? Yeah, I think the big thing that I've gotten from greater love and greater life is that it really just reminds people of their college days. And that's what I really wanted. I wanted people to like think of the conversations that they had in their dorm rooms and that they had with, you know, past relationships and really young relationships. Like I want people in college to see themselves and I want people older people to see themselves when they were in college and know that there's still a commonality. And I feel like that's exactly what I've been get, giving from older people and younger people. It just takes you back to that time. And another thing that I've really been getting is it really highlights that HBCU experience and that diversity of Black people and that it's such a wide range in, of types of Black people and lives that Black people can have in an HBCU. Um, that's what I've been getting. And then just like the purity of Ryan and Devin's love. I think, you know, it's a really, and this that's one of the things I also really wanted in writing these books was a really good example of a black couple who's trying to work it out and they're not perfect, but you know, they love each other and they want to be together. So, yeah. And speaking of Ryan and Devin, yes. How mm -hmm. did you develop them? Yeah, um, well, Ryan, she came from, she's not my story, but we do have some commonalities. She is from Los Angeles and she moves from, and she moves from LA to the East Coast to go to an HBCU that's kind of based off of my experience at Howard. And, um, you know, all the characters are people and little bits of people and memories that I experienced at Howard, but Ryan and Devin specifically, Ryan stems from that. And, you know, I think as I, writing Greater Love was really a therapeutic thing for me in college. And I think it was just me kind of taking, you know, the successes and failures and struggles of my first year at Howard and kind of putting that in a different story with different lessons and really making a book out of it. And then also, you know, as I was really starting to date in college, Devin is kind of what I, I don't wanna, yeah, what I wanted, like, you know, the experiences and, you know, when I was going through relationships, how I really wanted to be loved. And I think he is that for her. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So do you ever, did you ever have to sit down and just think about what is romantic, what's not, and how can I really show this? Yeah, I think while Greater Love was really a therapeutic process for me, it was my escape. I think when writing Greater Life, I really had to kind of sit down and face and understand the lessons that I learned while writing Greater Love. And I think that one of the things that I really realized with Greater Love is that Devin and Ryan have this really powerful relationship, but they have goals and they have this love that they both need within themselves. And that's where Greater Life came was, you know, I I knew at the end of this and the biggest lesson that I had learned for myself is that I couldn't love anyone without loving myself first. And I was like, Devin and Ryan both really need to learn that too. And I think that was what the second book was about 
really getting to that where it's like you I feel like that's a really big commonality in young relationships is losing yourself in love and I want to show that you don't have to lose yourself you can be in a relationship and find power from it and you know grow with somebody and be the best version of yourself yeah and when you say losing yourself like some people do they lose themselves in the relationship do you mean Devin like the relationship becomes their identity mm -hmm. I think when you're growing up um I think a relationship is learning somebody and I think you know being in college and you're in such a transitional time I think you we tend to focus on you know our partners and we want to you, we want them to succeed and we want what's best for them and then I think while you're doing that it's hard to really be like well this is what I want for me and I need to do what's best for me too I think love is captivating and it's all consuming and that's what I really mean by losing yourself in love I think we lose ourselves in the grandiose of love and the emotion and then I feel like when it when things happen that's when we're like oh like Oh, um, there were all these things I wanted to do, but I'm so focused on my relationship and all in our relationship moving on. But our relationship, our relationship can't move on if I'm not doing my part and moving on in my life and he's not moving on or she's not moving on in their lives so we can be the best version of ourselves for our relationship. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, you very much are a romance novelist. <laughs> and e even though you do tackle other themes as well, do you see yourself ever writing for another genre? Um, I believe that romance will always be in everything. I mean, I think you'll see in greater love and greater life, there's drama and there's like tense moments happen. So if anything, I feel like I'll always have that drama, but I'm, I'm always gonna be writing for black women and trying to just highlight the work that we do and the love that we need and like the gifts that we bring to the world. And I really don't see that changing. So there, there's always gonna be romance. There's always gonna be a powerful black woman in my books and whatever way I can fit that in, I think, yeah, I'm definitely open and exploring new ideas. Mm, absolutely love that you're representing. When it comes to representation, by the way, Devin, does it matter what kind of representation it is, for example, of Black women? Mm -hmm. so Richard. Um, yeah, I think it does matter. I think, you know, Black women, we, we give so much to this world and I think we're not recognized for it. So I think there definitely needs to be a strong representation of black women who are having a voice and having a say and having actions that they're putting into the world and that the world's actually being influenced by that. I think we definitely need that in literature um, because I think a lot of times books are black women being saved and black women, you know, in these relationships where like we're always trying to solve a problem and we're helping others. And I would like to see more books where everybody's trying to help the black woman. So. Can you think of a romance novel out there today where it's like, I like I like what this is doing and I feel like that book and my series as well is, is kind of helping to move this representation along. It's called, I think it's called Seven Days from Sunday or Tuesday. It's a day of the week. Yeah, this sounds very familiar. <laughs> yeah, and I can, I can tell you what it's about. Oh, seven days in June. Okay, I'm sorry. Seven days in June. Seven days in June by Tia Williams. I love that book. I fell in love with that book so much. And it's just about two authors who fall in love and about, you know, the life of publishing and Black people in publishing. And I thought, you know, while she, she had, like, her own set of problems too, like, she... She was a woman who defeated the odds and she was goal oriented and career oriented, but also had this strong love of her family and all the people around her. And she knew her history and her heritage. And I feel like she, she, they, she encapsulated, she was encapsulated in this book so well, you know, all of the grand, like the grandiose that black women are and how much we love and how much we work, but also that 
we're human and that we hurt and that we're often expected to, you know, not share our hurt with the world and keep moving. And I, I love that. I absolutely love her depiction of her main character in the book. And um, that's somebody who I really love seeing as a as another Black author, just, um, you know, Black women who you can cheer on like the entire book and you want to see doing well in all aspects of their life. Yeah, and everybody can see just from watching and even our previous conversation that you really mm -hmm. are in, such an advocate for for women, especially Black women. What was it like to put together a sisterhood while you were in college? And what advice do you have to the college student right now who would like to do the same? Yeah, I think my sisterhood that I got from an HBCU at Howard um, was the best thing to come out of my Howard experience. I think, you know, there's a lot of power in Black relationships, like Black friendships, Black romance. And I think, you know, the community that I formed at Howard is like my strongest community to this day. I mean, these women, even with the pandemic, I feel like I still talk to them every day. Like those are my, I have sisters, but those are like another set of sisters to me. And the love that I got from them through, we were all in my group sister, sister, in college and the love that I got from them in college taught me the love that I wanted romantically and it taught me you know like how the person that you have a romantic partnership with should also like be love you as much as your friend and I feel like that's something that can be really separated like romantic and platonic love and but I was like I really learned from them like no like I we need to fill this love with everybody that I'm with and need to fill this, you know, much of myself is with everyone that I'm with. So my advice would really be to people in college is that it's hard, you know, balancing friendships in college and navigating people because college is hard and you learn people as you get older and people change, but you know the people in your life who are really there for you and beside you and make you feel good and like lift your spirit and to keep them around and to cherish them and to, you know, like kind of like what I said with Devin and Ryan, like to grow with each other and to really appreciate and cherish one another. And speaking of growth, how have you grown as a writer, as a storyteller? Mm -hmm. I think as a storyteller, I am still learning my own voice and I am finding comfort in sharing my ideas with the world. I feel like Greater Love was a long project of that I was like working on in college. And I feel like now I'm really pushing love in all forms and that romance isn't just the only form of love that I want to write about. And so I'm growing in that voice and kind of coming to my own more conclusions. And, you know, I'm trying to push myself more into this author publishing world and just trying to navigate that. So I'm growing every day and just trying to get in the space and in the right doors. Okay. Yeah. And you're doing a great job of that. It's happening. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, does it get easier? Was it easier at all writing your book already having written your first one? Yeah. Does it get easier? I think with every voice, with every book, my bad, it gets easier because I think I'm learning that people are accepting my work and that they're relating to my work. And I think that allows me to get to my keyboard and to my computer and to write and not overthink and to just be like, you know, I'm going to write my heart out and people are going to relate to it because it's a relatable story and they relate to me and my my opinion is relatable. <laughs> so I feel like that's something that people really second guess is like, is the way I'm thinking, are people gonna get it? And I think I think with every book, you're like, yeah, people are gonna get this. My point of view is, it's not the only point of view. I'm not the only person that thinks like this. <laughs> My opinion is relatable, I like that. Yeah. Do you find that your work in journalism has contributed to your talents and your abilities as a fiction writer? Yeah, I, I think that my work in journalism, it, 
maybe in this book i think these two books are still very much college world oriented um but i think my work in journalism is pushing me for the next chapter in my life and the next type of books that i want to write i feel like i want to get juicier and realer and you know really challenge people and like make people think and leave raw stories that like open up people's worlds and like people's minds and really get them thinking so i definitely think my work in journalism is challenging me as a writer to to get crazier <laughs> honestly to get crazier by writing and to go and to go deeper into stories um so yeah and i'm excited for um the next the next story that i put out have you written that one already or is it still being developed yeah it's still being developed um but yeah the these two books are not my not going to be my only two books i have so many plans for so many more books and yeah i'm excited to put those out as well that is exciting you know do you think it's a good thing when readers come to expect certain kinds of books from their favorite authors or do you think that they should also be open to an author wanting to maybe explore some other themes and try different things kind of like what you were saying you plan on doing in the future yeah i think i think i don't think it's bad to expect a certain something from an author like you know a really good romance or a very like small thing but i think it is an author's job to keep our readers guessing and to surprise our readers because i think that's what keeps them guessing and going to the next book so um I I want my readers to expect something from me and then I'm like oh no like let's let's switch it up and let's change it because I think I think while people don't really like change when change they see change and it happens I think they end up liking it more than what they had before. Mm, say more about that that you think they end up liking it more than before. Yeah, I mean if an author I just feel like, you know, in our in romance books, there's so many different components. There's action, there's mystery, there's so many things. So I think, you know, as writers, we shouldn't, you know, I think like every book should have a great, you know, love aspect or family aspect or action aspect. I think as authors, we should keep trying to push ourselves to be more mysterious or be sexier, put more action in our books and to really challenge ourselves to be broader with our writing and in how do I do this? <laughs> to be broader with our writing and to just you know constantly keep readers guessing i feel like that's really the best way to do it i feel like they readers shouldn't know what we're going to write about next is that what I'm mm. yeah wow what kinds of conversations do you imagine coming up within the next book in the series? Um, well, this series is over. So the Greater Love series is over. So I think, you know, my next series will just, I'm definitely going to be talking about Black women. I'm definitely talking about strong Black women. Um, I don't want to get too much into what the next book is going to be about, but I think we're just... The conversations about that I want to bring about is just the best way that Black women can grow and the, you know, how our voice matters and how we matter and just, you know, different elements that Black women are going through today and highlight that. I mean, there's so much that Black women are doing in politics and, you know, publishing and entertainment, and I think it can be highlighted. If greater greater life, greater love were to ever get adapted into a television show or a film, what is something that would absolutely have to stay the same from the book? Uh, it would have to be an HBCU. Um, it would have to be in, like an all black cast. I mean, my book is for it's for black people and it's centered around the black face. So those things would be very very strong. Um, and I think that balance between, especially in my first book, between LA and the East Coast, I would still really want that 
to be shown um, because it's a weird connection and there's like I feel like the East Coast and the West Coast they always have this you know balance but they're this connect disconnect and I feel like the people are so different like you know people in the West Coast like when we go to the East Coast you always know who's from the West Coast and I want to like show that I want to show like the diversity in where people come from in my book but it's like we're all black and we're all in this space but we're all so different and I want to highlight that and I would definitely want to highlight that if it was um, made into a movie or a tv show you know this has come up in one of my other interviews I think like with the novelist not think but like with the mm -hmm. novelist Susan Park and some of the others um so in the show Insecure right I remember Issa Rae once saying that she was surprised that there's a actually a big percentage of her audience who would watch the show that were that were white. Mm -hmm. So what what would you think if that was the case like for your for your book as well to know that it's also it's also reaching other people? Would that surprise you like how that surprised Issa Rae? No, I don't think it would surprise me at all. I think I think black culture is something that really fascinates people, but they still kind of put us in this box. And I think that's kind of like a funny thing because that's one of the biggest things that made me want to go to an HBCU and that I learned from going to an HBCU is the diversity of black people. I mean, I'm constantly telling people at Howard that like, like if you go to Howard that you can be whoever you want to be and you're going to find people who are gonna wanna be that too. And it can be the most outlandish thing that everybody in your neighborhood told you you couldn't be. And you can go to an HBCU and you'll find somebody just like that who matches your energy. And I feel like, I feel like that's so cool. <laughs> like I feel like that's so, you know, I mean, diversity is in all cultures, but I think that's something that's just not shown in entertainment and in a lot of books is the diversity in black people and how you know, we're so labeled, but it's like, why? I mean, it's we're so different. We have so much character and like all this creativeness and all this genius to us. And it's in every single individual. And that's what I want to show and celebrate. So I would not be surprised at all. And I think, I think that's what draws people to see of all gen like I to shows like Insecure and to books like mine. I think that's what draws people is because it shows our differentness and our character and just how different we all are. And that authenticity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. definitely our, our authenticity for sure. Are there any love songs that come to mind when you think of greater love and greater life? Yeah, the one that just, when you said that, I think the biggest one, um, the song that comes to my, head, to my head is If This World Was Mine by Luther Vandross. If this world were mine, I would place at your feet all that I own. You've been so good to me. If this world were mine. I feel like that's what I love about, like, Devin and Ryan's love always makes me smile because I feel like that purity of their love, they both want to give to each other so much. And I feel like that's just, that's awesome. And that's love, just wanting to just, wanting everything that you want for yourself, for your partner, like all the blessings and all the good that you want in your life, like for that, that exact same thing for somebody else. I feel like that's love. And I feel like that and that song just, wanting to love somebody so much and wanting to give and give them your all and just love them with all that you have. And I feel like that was the song that came to mind immediately when you asked me that question. Um, and I personally think of the, the scene in Greater Love where they're in a restaurant and they're dancing together. And I just think of, I think of that song and I think of it as just like so cute and like that intimacy I feel like is really strong in their relationship and it kind of mirrors the intimacy in that song. That is a classic. <laughs> yeah awesome. yeah well a true romantic like you said <laughs> that's me so yeah yeah definitely. 
does the romance that you write about has it also played a part in in any relationships that you have had or um the romance that i write about yeah i mean i think writing while writing greater love i wasn't in the relationship but while publishing greater love i got into a relationship and i feel like in a way it was kind of a manifestation for me like um i feel like the the love that devin has like the i never really saw that like the love of giving and like wanting to protect somebody i never saw that like in a romantic partnership like in my age or experience that like in any relationship that i had been in and i feel like i manifested that just wanting like a true partnership and like somebody who wants to just like love you and care to you and like see a future with you and like just be a partner and like doesn't matter what life like throws your way you just want to do it with them so i feel like that definite i manifested that while writing that book and then in greater life i feel like definitely the balance of still accomplishing your goals and like wanting to move your relationship forward while also like still wanting to get everything done that you wanted to do for yourself and finding that balance and like still pushing you to be like a whole individual and like your partner to be a whole individual and like two individuals in a relationship living life together. Oh, yeah. Wow, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where do a lot of your ideas come from? Devin and like how do you get inspired does it happen when you're when you're trying to write or does it or do a lot of these ideas come when you're just on about your day like you know work working your day job or you know taking yeah. out um I feel like that's kind of one of the reasons the, the reasons and ways where I feel like I am a natural born author and writer is that ideas really do come to me like I I have one idea. I sit at a keyboard and they pour out. Like they're like the books almost write themselves for me in a way and it's really funny cuz it's like I can read Greater Love and Greater Life now and I'll be asking myself like how did I get how did I get there? How did I get to that? And I feel like they do they write themselves. I have one feeling or one thought and I sit down and it just comes out of me or I can listen to a song while I'm writing and I, like I can be they could be at a restaurant I'll be like okay this is the song going on while they're in the restaurant and I'm there and I'm just typing I'm just the recorder so I feel like yeah that that's always been the way that I write I feel like my brain is just always has a good story like it I constantly just have a good story to tell and I'm imaginative and creative and I'm always kind of just ready to go <laughs> like I could write a little story for you now honestly <laughs> Hey, yeah, it is. It's all in you. It's all in yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it like fires me up. Like it, it kind of like gives me like it's like an energy. Like it gives me energy to write and like to get a story on paper. As an author, do you remember your books page for page? No, I don't remember my books page for page. Do you mean more in the sense of do I remember everything that happened or yeah. do I remember yeah. yeah I I do remember everything that I write about there are time I remember but there are like the small details I feel like that's when I go back and I'm like oh like how did I think of that or like that very small detail that I knew I can tell is going to hit a writer or like a hit a reader because it hit me and I didn't even realize it so I feel like it's more in the small details but the big details I remember like every chapter, every scene, um maybe less in the dialogue. Oh, no, I'm, so sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um and yeah, in the dialogue and in the scenes um I definitely remember all of that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I've always wondered like mm -hmm. especially because novels their pages long. Yeah, so have you have you had people come up to you especially from HU or any other HBCU just young writers in general who have been inspired mm -hmm. and and you know they want some they want some inspiration from you and some advice? Yeah, I definitely have. I mean, I 
it, at Howard, we did a lot of writers rooms and I've been like talking to like my old, like a lot of high schools and just different people about this book and getting different reactions. And I think the advice that I've really been asked a lot for is this belief in your own voice. And I feel like that's really a big thing that I've been pushing. I feel like a lot of people say that they they can't write a book. And I think that the the strong thing in writing a book is believing that you have a good story to tell. And I think I think once you get rid of that fear, I mean, I think it really just kind of flows out of you, honestly. Um, so yeah, having that voice and like backing it up, I feel like even people be like, can you read my work or can you tell me it's good? And I'm like, it's good. Like you have to kind of believe in your own story and like your story develops from something. Like you didn't, this didn't pop up out of thin air. Like you felt the need to tell a story and and you feel the need to tell a story because you should be writing it. And I feel like that's really been the biggest, biggest question. And I feel like I also hear this from a lot of people of color, which is really interesting, you know, just not, not really believing that your perception of your history and your story and your life or even if even if you want to make it fiction is true and I feel like you know it is true like you felt those feelings and that's what made you want to write this book and want to tell it to somebody so that's really the advice that I give is really just to try and believe in your own voice write it like write the whole book and then like give it to your closest friend and I'm telling you they'll tell you like oh Matt I felt this way too or you know, I related to this character in this way. And even if the book needs work or the story needs work, you can work on it. But it's about getting your voice out there and getting your your story out. Are there any rules for approaching romance as a writer? No, not to me. I feel like the, the best thing about writing books is that it really has no restriction. <laughs> like, it's, I feel like that's kind of the... The cool thing about TV, about books versus TV, is that TV has restriction and, you know, it's labeled by audience. I mean, books do that too, but that's kind of more after you're writing the book. <laughs> um, so I feel like books, you can tell everything, you can be as descriptive about anything you want, and, and it's a book. So, you know, it's all up to the imagination. Yes. See, that's key, imagination. That will really drive a lot of the, the creativity, Devin? Yeah, definitely. The imagination. Because, I mean, books are, you see the book in your head. So it's like, as the author, we're just trying to get you there. We're trying to be as descriptive as we want. But it's like, we can tell you this flower is purple and it blooms a certain way, but you're seeing it however you're seeing it. And the person next to you is seeing it however they're seeing it. So we're just trying to get you to imagine and open up your mind to whatever world that you see and we're just seeing it all ways too honestly yeah because Devin I was gonna say too and I'm interested in knowing how much is too much detail within a story would you say because what I love when I'm reading fiction and like mm -hmm. your work for example I love that I'm just when you're effortlessly able to see it in your mind yeah. right but also it's not just saying such and such Ryan said, you know, sometimes there'll, yeah. there'll be like details as to how it was said or what they were doing as they said it. So how important is it to just kind of include those details versus mm -hmm. also kind of leaving it open to the reader yeah. about how Ryan or Devin or Freedom, whoever, how they said it? Yeah, I mean, details, I feel like, we should put the character in the room <laughs> like in front of the people so it's like when they look around they kind of need to know what they're looking at what's around you what they hear i feel like what i learned in college was a big thing with the senses like you kind of need to know a good i think it was three to four two to three senses as you're talking about dialogue so like you should know what they taste or what they feel or what they see um, or what they're looking at, things like that. So I feel like those are really good details. And my thing is you kind of, if you're in a scene, that is kind of where you want to set it up where you are. And then you want to go into the dialogue. That's how I set it up. Um, and then you want to know a little bit of the things of what's going on around them that they're noticing. So it's like, 
if we're sitting at a if we're sitting at a table and the waiter comes and you stop talking, we stop talking so the waiter could, you know, pour you another glass of wine or something. That stops the conversation and they should know that. I feel like, you know, you want to be in the conversation more than you want to be in the room because what's going on is what matters. Um, so really just picturing yourself like if I'm in this conversation, what am I seeing? What am I doing? What's the most important to thing to me while I'm talking to you or while I'm doing this? And that's what you're writing about. And I mean, that's why I always tell people just get it out there and like, like get the story type what you can because it's like in your editing process, in your publishing process, they're gonna tell you, oh, you need more dialogue. Like, oh, we don't, like you're, we're in the room and the room's pitch black and we just see you. Like, cause I feel like when you're writing, you're in your head, but as the reader, they're in their head too. So I feel like even if you're missing those things, that's the great part about editing. And that's over and over and over and over again is because you will get to those places where you're like, okay, we're in the scene and I don't know what's going on around me or we're in the room and this person standing in front of me, I said that two pages ago, and now this person just been staring at me and I'm looking around the room for two pages, you know? So I feel like that's the editing process, but the big thing is just getting the story down and you can fix all of those little details later. Ooh, love that. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned manifestation, Devin. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is important to you as far as, you know, going along in your journey and in terms of how you stay motivated? How important is manifestation to you, if it is at all? Definitely. Manifestation is a huge, huge part of my life. I mean, like I said, writing and being an author was the first and originally like the only thing I wanted to do growing up. So you know, we live in a generation now where not a lot of people are reading and, you know, especially physically going and buying books. And I think that I have to believe in my own craft and manifest like, this is what I'm going to do. And this is where I'm going to be to continue to go. I mean, I think even going through college and growing up, I had to tell myself, like, I'm going to publish my first book before I graduate. And I and I did it. So I feel like manifestation is definitely an important part of my journey and kind of like a, it's like my goal. <laughs> it's kind of like my goal in my manifestation are the same thing. And um, I just believe, you know, what I put out in the world, you know, God's going to bless me with because I'm working for it. And as long as I'm doing that, you know, who and what is going to stop me? And on that note, Devin Bakewell. <laughs> thank you. Thank you again for having me. It's so appreciated. Oh, Devin Bakewell, I appreciate you coming back and wanting to come back. I loved speaking with you again. And again, just proud of you. Let everyone know how they can keep up with you and the wonderful work that you're doing. And of course, you know, I want to talk to you again in the future. Of course, ready for those books that you're going to be, more of your books coming out. Yes. Yes, of course, of course. Any book I have, I'm happy to come back on the show. Okay. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Devin Bakewell Author um, for all my information, for more books, um, for any information going on with me, book signings, website information, and all that on Instagram. There. Yes, guys, make sure that you check it out. And thank you so much as well to all the viewers and listeners. Until next time, so booking cool.